All right. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome. My name is Michael Desjardins. We are streaming live from the Griffin Center for Healthy Living uh, up in Oxford, Connecticut, for another great evening of cooking and learning. And, you know, tonight, again, Mike Desjardins, Manager of Employer Wellness. I have with me tonight Chef Michael Rizzio. We are going to take you through one of the kind of seasonal favorites that many, many people tend to enjoy, which is a soup. Um, you know, growing up, my mother used to make a nice chicken and dumpling soup, and unfortunately, we lost that original recipe that she had. So I'm hoping after watching Chef Mike perform for us tonight, I'm going to be able to take this recipe and adopt it as one of my own. Um, I want to welcome any of the Griffin employees or caregivers that purchased our dinner-ready box for tonight. We're hoping you get the most out of this and, and you can enjoy the evening. Um, so without further ado, we're going to get started. So just to um, reiterate, uh, the recipe will be uh, shown on Facebook Live um, at the end of this. Uh, and we're going to stream different angles so you can get a real good view of what Mike is preparing. Uh, and again, this is a vegetable soup with shredded chicken uh, and um, uh, semina flour uh, dumplings. So I'm going to turn the mic over to Chef Mike Rizzio, and we're going to get going with the evening. Thank you. Well, I'd like to welcome everybody to tonight's uh, show here. We're going to do a nice uh, vegetable soup tonight uh, using some local winter vegetables. Uh, we are going to have... Uh, rotisserie chicken if you will um, that we're going to turn into a chicken stock for the soup uh, we're going to use the meat of the chicken so it's going to kind of be an all all in one dish um, so I, I'd like to just kind of get right into this um, the vegetables so for tonight's dish uh, you may or may not be familiar but turnips turnips are, are rather large uh, so for value wise um, this is a great, it's a cheaper product, um, readily available through farms or the supermarket uh, in winter and fall, uh, but also year round. So this is one of those ones that we can stretch out very far. Butternut squash also, um, it's a cheaper vegetable and, and it kind of turns into a bulk meal. So if we're doing this for family or we're going to prep out a bunch of soup that we can put into the freezer uh, and grab it out as we need it, Again, a vegetable that's great. There's going to be uh, some carrots, some onions, parsnips, and uh, celery, a little bit of garlic. Um, so very versatile soup. Uh, the first thing I'll say is if you can't get any of these ingredients, that's completely okay. Uh, uh, find what's in season or what's at the grocery store. All different root vegetables are interchangeable in this uh, recipe. But uh, first and foremost, we're going to get a, a couple pots on here. So what I did was... I went to the grocery store, I got a raw chicken. I take a pot, fill it up with cold water here, put the chicken, this is just a whole chicken skin on and everything. Put that right into the pot, cold water, and then bring this low and slow, medium high heat. You're gonna bring it up to a simmer. Once it simmers, turn it down to low. Let that go for two, maybe an hour, an hour and a half. Um, the next part here that we're gonna add into that also is a sachet of herbs. Uh, tonight, a little thyme, parsley, bay leaf. Uh, I also like to put some peppercorns in. So we take these, we wrap them up in a little butcher's twine, add that right into the pot with the chicken. And again, that's pretty much done. Just let it cook. That chicken's gonna cook. We're gonna use that in the uh, chicken and dumplings. And we're also gonna use that stock that it's gonna kind of naturally make from the chicken itself. Uh, while that chicken's going, we're going to take another pot here. We're going to put a little bit of olive oil. For this recipe, because we're not sautéing, I do like to use some olive oil. Also builds the flavor of the dish. And then we take a little celery, onion, carrots, the maripois, if you will. We're going to dice them up. And again, as Chef Daryl said on the last episode, it's about safe knife handling skills. So, with your fingers, when you're cutting something, keep those fingers tucked away. Okay, you don't want the fingers pointed out. You can grab it with a knife if they're fingered out. So, a little C with the tip of your finger, and then down. 
Also, working on the flat side of the carrot or whatever vegetable, that's the most important part. So flat side down, see with the finger, and just nice and slow. And then again, as we cut these, what we're kind of looking for is all uniform pieces, okay? If these hard winter vegetables, if we have them all the same size, they're gonna cook all at the same time, okay? If we change out some of these to a softer vegetable, they're gonna cook faster, so maybe we'll delay putting them all in together. But for tonight, carrots, turnips, parsnips, little butternut squash, some celery, all into the pan. Butternut squash usually comes nice, nice whole piece. This is a Y peeler. A uh, little different than the traditional, kind of one where you would see in this fashion. What's great about these Y peelers are that you can do a full strip. And I feel like it makes a big difference when you're peeling and processing uh, large amounts of, of vegetables. Um, you don't have to sit there and keep peeling away like we did back when we were kids. So. Hey, Mike. Um, um, normally, uh, we have this question come up, and it came up again. Um, we answered this regarding sautéing vegetables, but sure. I would imagine it would apply to soups. But So the question was, how important is it to keep the vegetables all the same size? Yeah, yeah. So it really is. Um, and this is going to go hand in hand with more or less the density of, of all of the vegetables. Um, so you take a hard vegetable, butternut squash, uh, turnips, parsnips, um, carrots. It's, it's a very dense uh, um, vegetable. Onions, a little softer. Um, they release their liquids faster, they cook faster. Uh, so if you're gonna saute uh, and these, these hard vegetables take longer to cook, you're gonna get them into the pan first. Okay, kind of get that caramelization process going. They're gonna release their liquids, starting to soften up. At that point, then we start adding in the softer ingredients. Uh, same kind of thing for anybody who uses garlic. We don't put garlic in, in the beginning of a dish when we're making like sauces and things like that because we don't want the garlic to burn. That's a good point. You know, so it, it kind of related in that sense, but also the density of it. You know, this is these butternuts. Uh, turnips, parsnips, they're, they're very dense, yeah. they're very hard, so they do take a while to, to release yeah, so their the, liquids, get softer. That answered the question specifically. It's, you know, I think you got to take into account, just as Chef Mike said, you know, these are thicker, denser vegetables. They need a little bit longer to cook. The goal is to get them tender. You don't want them, like the Italians say, mushan. You want them nice and tender and, and, and you know, palate to the mouth. You don't want them getting all mushy into, into, into your soup or your saute, so. So, Thanks. absolutely. And then, for me also, when, I'm, when we're cooking vegetables, especially for soups, I do like to get some caramelization on the vegetables in the beginning. So, when you hear that sizzling in the pan, um, that, that's a good sign, especially for, for releasing flavors of the vegetables and, and their natural juices. So, what we're going to do now, cut up some onions. Now, onions for anyone who is unfamiliar with dicing, okay? You're gonna take an onion, cut it in half. Again, that flat side down. Okay, we're gonna make two horizontal cuts and then the vertical cuts. The less amount of vertical cuts you make, the larger the piece of onion. So if you don't like that texture of onion or you don't want that super present, you're gonna make a, a lot more cuts. Um, if you like onion, you like the texture of it, you want it more present in the dish, make less vertical cuts and then again we're not cutting that root so we don't cry and as you can see this is in real time here so um, just you know two minutes of sauteing those root vegetables make a big difference in the end product we got some of the caramelized some of the juices out of the root vegetables we're going to add the onion in now, everybody should have a recipe that bought one, but this is gonna kind of be a, a feel. So for a gallon of soup, we're gonna use 
one whole yellow, yellow onion, a medium to large size onion. Um, and then you're going to talk about, you know, however much of the vegetables, there's no right, there's no wrong. If you like butternut, you really like butternut, but you don't like turnip so much, put more butternut, put less turnip. And, and that's really interchangeable to what you like and what your taste preferences. So we're just going to let these cook a little bit. This is on medium heat. This looks good. What I really like about the dish, uh, Chef, is, is, the, is the soup is, number one, it's that time of season. Um, you know, unfortunately, right now, we're not really getting full winter blasts. But, you know, fall, winter, we like that warm, cozy feeling. What's better than a great hearty soup, right? Uh, and we're using high quality ingredients. You know, root vegetables have a ton of vitamins and nourishment. And, you know, this is important. We have, you know, lean chicken, um, low sodium broth. Um, it's, it's a fairly healthy dish, 360 calories, I think, per bowl. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you can't get better in fresh root vegetables and they're easily accessible at any uh, store, whether you have to go to a Whole Foods or even a Stop and Shop or an Aldi, they all have these types of vegetables. Absolutely, and, and I like it even more because uh, you, you can develop this dish into something else very easily. We can put a pasta into this dish, we can put beans into this dish, you know, we can make a pasta fazool, if you will, and, and, and it's very versatile. So I like the idea of the beans. You know, and, and it's adding a lot of pro, uh, protein into the yeah. dish and, and things like that. So uh, the versatility of making any soup um, is great. It's just that about learning kind of the fundamentals about how do I start it? Uh, how do I make my stocks from home? You don't have to make a stock from home. So we'll, we'll take a step back and just talk about those brief differences. Um, this is the best way, in my opinion, to make a stock and, and value wise, too, because you take one chicken or two chickens if you have a large family, take a couple chickens, put them into a bigger pot, fill them up, you know, uh, the water till it's just covering the chicken, and let that cook. If the water boils down too much, add a little bit more water. You know, it's not, there, there's no right or wrong as far as th that, you making a stock. If you like to flavor it, put the herbs, whatever you like or whatever's in season, and, and adapt and make stocks because the fresh stocks are, are in my opinion, the best. And that leads into the next part of if we use chicken bouillon cubes or if we use a base or even some of the stocks that we can buy at the store they have quite a bit of sodium uh, some of them are low sodium but this is a way that you can really control uh, your nourishment and what you're putting into your body so chicken water some fresh herbs and there's your basic chicken stock uh, as this boils there may be some what we call scum on top um, and it's kind of just the impurities of of the chicken the reason we don't boil uh, the the stock is because we don't want it to get cloudy and we don't want those impurities to kind of contaminate if you will our wonderful stock that we're making so along the process here i'll just go around the top and you make this little motion with a spoon. Doesn't have to be a ladle, even the tablespoon will work. And as you, it'll push the impurities to the side and then you just kind of go and skim them away. But there's nothing wrong with using base, with using bouillon, especially if you're in a time crunch. You know, go to the store, get a rotisserie chicken that they sell that are very cheap and you could just pull apart that chicken, substitute however you want there. If you want to use just chicken breasts, same thing, go get a pack of chicken breasts and drop those in instead. Uh, some people don't like thighs, some people don't want kind of the fat of the chicken in, in the water, and that's okay. As chefs, we kind of think of it as a way of that little bit of fat also adds flavor to the dish. Kind of takes it to the next level there. Mike, what do you, what do you, what's the um, uh, proper term for when you chill down, uh, let's say a chicken soup, and then the next day you go to reheat it, and it has that little fat layer on top? Right, right. So that is kind of exactly what we're talking about with uh, you boiling a whole chicken skin on. Uh, that fat from the skin renders out, if you will, into the water. And, and that little uh, fat cap, if you will, that's going to be all of that rising to the surface. Gotcha. So, it's, so it separates. Yeah. Um, and, and, and don't think that is a bad thing because if you don't want that, you can just take that yeah, and exactly. remove it. You, know. you do lose a little flavor by doing that, but yeah. it's still... No, absolutely you do. Um, but, like I said, 
Uh, I really want to get it clear where it's, there's no right or wrong. Uh, this dish specifically, very versatile. It's, it smells awesome in here right now. This is really good. So as we're cooking uh, this chicken, at this point it's about the hour and a half mark from when I put it in. Um, so what we will do is, the chicken comes out, and that's a whole bone-in bird, okay? And at this point, we're gonna turn that water, or I'm sorry, that heat to that pot off. And essentially right here, you have a chicken stock, okay? If you have uh, bouillon cubes, okay? That, again, if you don't wanna put salt directly into it, you can take a, a chicken bouillon cube or a tablespoon of chicken base or a vegetable base. Again, low sodium is where I would go with that so that you can control the flavor. Uh, but put a couple tablespoons of base or a couple cubes of bouillon cube into this and it's gonna make it a richer, more flavor, flavorful stock. Um, so as we're cooking here, these vegetables, this is the celery, onion, carrots, parsnips, turnips, and we've cooked these down. And if we can look, bring this under the camera a little more, the onions have gotten translucent. And if you look, if you could see, I don't know if you can on the camera, the carrots, the turnips have almost gone like opaque a little bit. You can, you can see them starting to actually soften up. And at that point, what we're going to do is take some of that chicken stock and we're going to add it into the vegetables. And I like to put just enough to about the first digit of your finger above the vegetables with, uh, with chicken stock. And then again, what we're gonna do here is bring this up to a boil. As soon as you see it boiling, we're gonna turn it down to a simmer and let it cook. Uh, in that meantime, this chicken, which again, I'm gonna bring over here, is almost falling apart right off the bone. Uh, this process, again, about an hour and a half start to finish. Uh, so we're going to take the skin. We'll remove the skin. Be careful because it is hot. Remove the skin. And then just pull the meat out. Discard the bones to the side. You're going to find a little bit of cartilage in the joints from time to time. So make sure that you do pull those out. Um, and it's, it, that cartilage is like a gelatin kind of feel. So it's, it's really noticeable. Mike, one of the questions that came in was, um, does it matter um, much on flavor using boneless breast versus bone in? Uh, I think, you know, traditionally people always feel bone in gives a little more flavor. Absolutely. But, you know, could you buy like a quarter chicken or a half chicken that has a bone and then still do that? A hundred percent. In the culinary world, traditionally, you wouldn't roast your bones when you're making the stock, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It doesn't change the flavor in a negative way it's just a it's a different richer darker uh, uh, I guess traditionally you would see raw bones raw chicken that's bone in is going to give you a lighter stock something that's roasted is just going to give it a the color of the the broth it's going to be darker so don't be alarmed by that but as we continue uh, just kind of breaking down this chicken you're going to pull the bones and, and I mean, there's your, there's your breast, there's your boneless breast. And if you want to make a stock out of this, that's completely fine. This would be, if I'm just going to use breast, then I would use a chicken base or a, a bouillon cube to kind of fortify that stock that we just made. But absolutely boil it and don't discard that water because it's great for everything from just pasta, yeah. pasta and some chicken broth. You could broth, probably use it you know? for risotto, I would imagine. A hundred percent. And, and I take that up, I cord it, or I put it in pint containers, put it in the freezer, take it out as you need it. Yeah. And that way it can That's really a solid stretch. solid base, yeah, it's a good base. Really stretch. So we took the breasts off, we took the wings off, we're removing all the skin. And we're just, yeah, yeah. And, and you don't have to cook it hard. It's not like you're sitting there boiling and boiling and boiling. We're just gonna kind of pick through. This looks good. And just remove all the little nuggets that you find. You know, and this is something where I do take the time because the more time that you take pulling 
all the meat out, the farther we stretch this, the more portions that we can make. And, and this, um, again, this was, most of you um, have heard us mention this, but this was available as a, a box dinner at Griffin. Um, you can buy this already ready to go. Um, and we did have people do that, so we, we hope you enjoy this. And the goal was to make it really easy for you um, and to be able to watch Chef Mike prepare this with you. And, then, and don't worry, if you happen to purchase it or you want to watch this later, we do uh, send this over to YouTube. We have a Griffin Health page on YouTube so you can watch some of our videos that we've already done um, and again this will be on there tomorrow so you can easily go back and view this uh, pause it and, and see you know if there's anything you might have missed and if anybody has any questions I'm in the kitchen most days of the week so yeah. please come down and ask myself chef Daryl any of the chefs that they'll be more than happy to help you out uh, anybody who bought the kit to take home uh, you're gonna see a little plastic souffle cup that has chicken base in it so the recipe we're taking those chicken breasts that are already shredded for you i'm going to take that i'm going to put that into some water and we're going to start the process of making uh the chicken stock that way so anybody who bought the box just take that shredded chicken take the, all of that chicken base put it into the pot <coughs> into a pot and uh, maybe two quarts of water and then taste it you know that's fully cooked ready to ready to eat so taste it if you have to add more water it's a little maybe too salty or too rich for you add more water and adjust because a part of this is you guys learning how to cook uh, but also learning what your taste bud buds like and don't like by you you cooking you know so we, we just had um, we just had our, uh, our girl Christy ask um, would turkey do the same thing they can uh, easily and I, I I say why not if you want to do turkey I mean absolutely you can do a turkey breast a hundred percent this a hundred one hundred percent everything is versatile proteins are versatile um, and and we, we can take a, a, a sidetrack from this dish specifically if you wanted to make it vegetarian you know you could take all of the vegetables that we used okay and roast them just take them cut them into bigger chunks roast them put them into a pot, cover them in water, like we're doing with the chicken stock, and you can make a vegetable stock that same way. Uh, and, and you don't have to use a protein, or if you're a meat, uh, a protein, or a meat substitute person, th that's how we can do that. We can add that instead of chicken, turkey, and whatnot. So, there's your whole bird, broken down, pulled, ready to go. We have the vegetables covered and with the uh, you know the power of TV if you will this cook time here that I have on these vegetables is about a half an hour or so um, this is just chicken stock the same vegetables with that we did this way and I brought this up to a boil it's now simmered uh, this liquid has reduced by about half okay and when I'm making a stock what I like to do is keep adding flavors and flavors and flavors that liquid is going to reduce down and we're just going to replenish it so we have quite a bit of chicken stock left over the liquid if we can see here the liquid on this has just reduced down to touching the top of the vegetables okay so when it gets to that point what I'm going to do is take about two quarts or just about double what's in your pan right now and we're gonna bring that up to a boil because at this point we're in the final stages of almost wrapping up this dish uh, your vegetables are done your chicken is pulled this would be a way that if you want to store it separate you could take your chicken put them into containers, put it into the freezer, put it into the refrigerator, uh, if you don't want to use it all for this dish. But it's a great way to go out, if you're gonna meal prep, and say, I'm gonna take some chicken, we're gonna make some soup with it. I'm gonna take the rest of this chicken, we're gonna make chicken salad, or I'm gonna make salads for the week. It's a great way to utilize a whole bird. And when you buy whole chickens, you're gonna pay less than going out and just buying uh, chicken breast boneless skinless you know there's a little more steps involved but value wise it's great 
Uh, so the next part of this dish that kind of wraps it up is making the dumplings. Uh, essentially, dumplings are water and flour mixed together. Uh, we're going to create a doughy paste. We're going to drop them into the same liquid uh, that we have our vegetables in. We're going to let them boil right in that and finish the dish. Uh, so for everybody who has it at home, there is five and a half ounces of flour. To that, the Parmesan cheese. And again, this part, this is about more flavor and what your preference is. So what your taste buds is like, that's what you're going to do. The Parmesan cheese is a little salty, but what I still like to do is season the, the dumpling itself. So in the bowl here, we have salt, pepper, flour, the Parmesan cheese. To that, at home, you guys have eggs. You should have one egg in the pack. So we're going to add the eggs. We're going to add the milk. And then we are just going to stir this up. Okay. And if you guys have worked with dough before, what we're looking for is kind of a runnier texture. We still want it all combined. We want it to hold its shape, but we want it to be a little bit lighter in texture, if you will. So if it looks wet, that's okay because we're going to essentially boil it right into the water. So if at home, when you're making this, if it's really tight for some reason, uh, sometimes as crazy as it sounds, humidity uh, will play a factor in this. If it's super cold in your house or if it's the humidity is really high in your house for some reason, uh, you may have to add a little water to it or you may have to add a little flour to it if it's too wet. So this is really, really simple. You don't have to overthink making it. If you like cheese, put more cheese in it by all means. That looks good. And when my mother used to make dumplings, she used to have the dough. She would make dough and then roll it out a little bit and then exactly. cut strips and then just throw them right into, a the, right into the pot. So if you're familiar with making pasta, you can use pastas in this. If you make gnocchi at home mm -hmm. and things like that, all versatile things. Uh, I like to almost think of this as a wet gnocchi batter, if you guys are familiar with that. Uh, if not, what I like to do is basically, if I can take a spoon and pull it off and it lands and it kind of stays together, then that's the texture that we're looking for. Because when that goes in the water, it's going to bind up. Yeah. And, and that's really what we're looking for. Uh, so we're going to take that mixture. And we're going to put it in, I'm going to show you two different ways. If you have a pastry bag at home, put it into a pastry bag. If you have a Ziploc bag, just put it into the Ziploc bag, kind of get the air out of it, and then you're going to just cut the corner of the bag off. It's the same thing as a pastry bag. You know, a very, very uh, simple way. And we're going to go right over the pot. And as you can see, there's a little bit of simmering in the middle, around the sides, but yeah, it's not good. at a rolling boil. Okay. When we make soups, when we make stocks, we really try not to boil the heck out of it. So all you're going to do here is, and look, I mean, I know that it looks wet. You might be concerned, uh, but don't trust the process. <laughs> trust the process. Uh, we are going we trust to trust you, Mike. Don't worry. We're going to take the batter, just squeeze it through and whatever size you want, you just cut it right off drop the dumplings in and it's stuck to the side of the knife and there's nothing wrong with this that. This is cool. And you just cut them off and you drop them in. Now the important part here is don't touch it. Don't stir the pot. Don't like, oh, where are they? They're gone. I'm never going to see them again. <laughs> don't worry about it. When they're done, they're going to float to the top. It might take five minutes, six minutes, but let them cook. If you undercook them, they're going to be really chewy. You're going to get that raw yeah. flavor. You're going to taste yeah, the you flour. Yeah, you raw dough in your soup. No, not at all. And this is the one part of the dish that I really like when we're making the dough. 
I like to put salt in it. Because this is what you taste. This is the, the, the big part of it. That's a good consistency. And, and don't worry about the size. Don't, they, they're kind of stringy and whatnot. Oh, there goes the spoon. Thanks. Don't worry about it. I knew that was going to happen. You see me have the knife ready for you? We're on the same I page here, but I, I like this. I appreciate you looking up. And I think that's how the recipe read, actually, was to use um, a table knife. I think it's what it said. And you just cut them off. a clean cut. Okay. One, another way that I personally like doing it is I'll take them. I'll, I'll take the soup when it's done, chicken and all, in those last couple steps you'll see. I won't put the dumplings in right now. I'll take that and put it into almost a casserole dish. And then I'll put these dumplings on top. And then I'll bake it in the oven uh, for like 15 minutes. And, and what you get is the same dish, just in a different way. You almost get like these, these gooey uh, bread bites that are on top of your chicken soup, um, which is a, a texture and, and a, another way to have the dish, which is great. So as you can see in the pot here, the dumplings are just floating to the top. They took a couple minutes. But again, the, the stringiness of them, the different shapes, kind of brings the whole uh, dish together and it brings, you know, uh, a character to the dish, if you will. So. We are almost completed here. So now traditionally at my house, if we're having chicken and dumplings, uh, I am going to very simply take a little bit of the chicken and, and this is, at this point, it's room temperature. You don't have to put it in into the stock or into your soup at this point. And I like to just go in and grab some vegetables, grab some dumplings. And serve it up like that. For me, I always have to have a little Parmesan cheese on top and also just a little bit of salt and pepper just to finish it off there. And what you've created in a very short period of time, maybe two hours, uh, start to finish is a base for a very large amount of food. Uh, we have chicken stock reserve that you can use in future dishes. This looks great. Uh, and we also have, you know, soup ready to feed with this amount and the, the amount if you bought one of the boxes, easily f feed five, six people. Um, so it's a great foundation. It's one of the building blocks of kind of the culinary program and what we're trying to go with and, and develop here. Um, these are the small things that you'll see in other recipes and, and you can utilize them and, and take advantage of starting here. And, and learning more and more as we uh, do more and more recipes. Yeah, I hear, you know, being in the calf, um, you know, our, our calf is, our dining area is the best unknown restaurant in the valley, if you ask me. But, um, you know, I hear a lot of, of people talking about the cost of groceries and how hard it is to keep up with eating healthy. And they always get this misimpression that it costs so much more to eat healthy. And I think that, you know, if they're smart about it and they want to get involved and learn, it's really not. They can make smarter choices. They can go with food that's going to last longer and keep their appetite suppressed instead of those sugary foods that are going to keep them going back for more, the sweets and things like that. You know, and cooking on a budget was one of the things that we did, the streams, yep. where we showed you how you can take an abundance of uh, very inexpensive vegetables and, and lean protein and stretch it pretty far. Um, and that's one of the things we try and do is to get you to eat healthy and to make those better decisions and change your behavior. You know, you don't go, try not to eat after seven o'clock at night if you can help it, you know. Try to keep that nine hour window when you're eating um, and putting in healthier things into your body. You know, there is a, 
a one to two week kind of turnaround where you can change your cravings and, and change your palate into getting um, uh, used to more vegetables and, and the root vegetables and, and not so much the, the, the starches and the sugars and things like that. So, Agreed. Um, Groceries are not cheap right now, but the way that you can stretch this, for example, is I only use half of the butter and squash. And like I said, we have enough to feed probably 10 people tonight. Um, half of a turnip, one parsnip, half of one of our large carrots that we have. Uh, but, and one whole chicken that can be utilized elsewhere for other dishes, for other meals yeah. throughout your day and things. So groceries may have gone up, but when you break it down per dish or, or per meal, you know, you're, you're feeding a lot of people and, and your cost has come down instead of ordering out or instead of making yeah. maybe an unhealthy food choice. Uh, by saying I'm going to buy a, a container of soup that's already pre-made that has a lot of MSG, yeah, the sodium. that has a lot of sodium, that has a lot of things yeah. like that. So I mean, even these, like you can cube these and roast them. Yeah. Like what you know you've done in the past, you've oh, talked about right. caramelizing them and getting them, and then they keep, and they you know you can freeze it afterwards and it lasts a while. So and and making the, eating the same foods different ways, keeping your palate. You know, if you're on diets and you're like I don't like eating the same thing all the time, well. We have soup here, we can make a salad out of one, we can make a sit down dinner, and it's using the same food, food products that you see here today, um, and just u using them different ways. Yeah, yes. So this looks great, Mike. Um, great job, it smells awesome. Um, there's enough for me to have a taste after and give you the, the, the thumb up, which I'm not even concerned with. And you know, um, I think as we conclude this evening, I wanna thank everyone for tuning in. Um, we had some good questions. I mean, with a soup such as this, it's pretty straightforward. You know, we try to use healthy root vegetables, low sodium broth, um, teach you the way to do it on your own. Um, thank you for those who purchased the kits at Griffin. We're gonna keep doing this. We have two more of these Cook with the Chef sessions that are gonna be scheduled. Please look for the advertisements on, on social media and in the cafeteria at Griffin. Um, this is again, part of our healthy living series. We do out of the quarry walk. Um, we have Mediterranean style cooking. We have cooking on a budget, um, cooking for chronic disease management. These are all the things that we're trying to do here um, to look at overall health and wellness as a whole, not just an individual. So um, I'm gonna say thank you. Um, we're gonna sign off. Thank you, Chef Mike. Thank you very another much. great a, another great show and um, please tune in uh, on future ones as we will be doing these again in the next week or two so everyone have a great night take care